Welcome to this exam preparation video where I'll show you how to answer a question on osmosis, a practical method. This question describes an investigation into the effect of surface area on osmosis in cubes of potato. A student cut two cubes out of potato tissue, each with sides of 35 millimeters in length. One cube he put into a concentrated sucrose solution and the other cube he cut into eight equal sized smaller cubes and then put them into sucrose solution of the same concentration as that used for the large cube. He recorded the masses of the cubes at regular intervals. Here are the results. We've got to describe the method. We've got to start from when the potato cubes have been cut and we've got to consider all of the controlled variables. Let's see if we can visualize what's happening here. In one experimental group, we have a single potato cube with dimensions of 35 millimeters on each side, while in the other group, that large cube has been further cut into eight smaller cubes. But the total mass of the potato in each group is the same. The potato mass is a variable that should be controlled. Both groups of potato cubes are then placed into beakers of equal concentration sucrose solution at a constant room temperature. Temperature is another variable that we need to control. We choose room temperature because we don't need any other additional equipment like heaters or freezers. We need to ensure that we stir the cubes in the beakers in order to make sure that all cube surfaces remain in contact with the sucrose solution and not rest on the bottom of the beaker. We then need to specify the time, since this is another variable to be controlled. We're told that the mass of the cubes was recorded at intervals so we just need to decide what these intervals are. If we look back at the graph, we can see that at 40 minutes, there is a significant change to the shape of both curves. This means that there must be a data point plotted at 40 minutes. So therefore, 40 minutes is the maximum time interval that we could leave our potatoes in the beakers. Time intervals could be less than 40 minutes, as long as they're factors of 40. I'm going to choose 20 minute intervals. So after 20 minutes in the beakers, the cubes were removed and dried before being weighed. We need to dry them first because otherwise the mass of the sucrose solution still dripping off them would add to the mass of the potato. After measuring their mass, the cubes were replaced back into the sucrose solutions for another 20 minutes before being removed, dried, reweighed, and replaced again. This process then repeats for 160 minutes in total. So to summarize then, the variables that we need to control are time, temperature, mass of potato and species of potato if we're being really picky. However, the size and the species of potato cubes was decided for us in the question, so we don't need to worry about these. Now that we've fully understood the experiment, we can write an answer to the question. We can say things like this carry out the whole procedure at a constant room temperature. Once all cubes are in their sucrose solutions, stir the solutions continuously to ensure all surfaces are in contact with the solution. After 20 minutes, remove the potatoes and dry them on a towel. Measure their mass using the balance. Replace the cubes into their sucrose solutions for another 20 minutes and then repeat the remove, dry, weigh, replace cycle every 20 minutes for 160 minutes. You don't need to write this word for word as I have here as long as you have the general gist. Make sure your instructions are clear and to the point. Notice how I went about preparing my answer. I thought carefully about what I would do if I ever had to run this experiment for myself I've thought about the order in which the steps would have to be taken, and why. I've looked at all the information available to me, even to the point of noticing the change of shape in the graph at 40 minutes. You may have had to actually carry out this practical investigation in school, or you may not. You may have carried out similar investigations using potatoes, or cubes of agar or something else. Draw on these experiences and describe the steps in such a way that someone else could follow your instructions and repeat your investigation exactly. So that's it for now. Make sure you click the thumbs up and subscribe for future videos like these. Follow my various social media for latest news or revision tips. 
Good luck with your own revision, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.